Los Angeles International Airport IATA, LAX, ICAO, CLAX, FAA LID, LAX is the primary international airport serving Los Angeles, California. The airport is most often referred to by its IATA airport code and FAA LID LAX, with the letters pronounced individually. LAX is located south of the Westchester District of the City of Los Angeles, California, 18 miles 30 kilometers southwest of downtown Los Angeles, between the District of Westchester to its immediate north, the City of El Segundo to its immediate south and the City of Inglewood to its immediate east. It is owned and operated by Los Angeles World Airports an agency of the Government of Los Angeles, formerly known as the Department of Airports. Covering 3,500 acres 1 hectares of land, LAX is also notable for its four parallel runways. In 2017, LAX handled 84,557,968 passengers, making it the world's fifth busiest and the United States' second busiest airport following Hartsfield Jackson Atlanta International Airport. As the largest and busiest international airport on the U.S. West Coast, LAX is a major international gateway to the United States, and also serves a connection point for some passengers traveling internationally. The airport holds the record for the world's busiest origin and destination airport, since relative to other airports, many more travelers begin or end their trips in Los Angeles than use it as a connection. It is also the only airport to rank among the top five U.S. airports for both passenger and cargo traffic. LAX serves as a hub or focus city for more passenger airlines than any other airport in the United States. It is the only airport that four U.S. legacy carriers Alaska, American, Delta, and United have designated as a hub and as a focus city for Air New Zealand, Allegiant Air, Norwegian Air Shuttle, Qantas, Southwest Airlines, Spirit Airlines, and Volaris. While LAX is the busiest airport in the greater Los Angeles area, several other airports, including Hollywood Burbank Airport, John Wayne Airport, Long Beach Airport, and Ontario International Airport, also serve the area. History In 1928, the Los Angeles City Council selected 640 acres, 1.00 square miles, 260 hectares in the southern part of Westchester for a new airport. The fields of wheat, barley and lima beans were converted into dirt landing strips without any terminal buildings. It was named Mines Field for William W. Mines, the real estate agent who arranged the deal. The first structure, Hangar No. 1, was erected in 1929 and is in the National Register of Historic Places. Mines Field opened as the airport of Los Angeles in 1930 and the city purchased it to be a municipal airfield in 1937. The name became Los Angeles Airport in 1941 and Los Angeles International Airport in 1949. In the 1930s the main airline airports were Burbank Airport then known as Union Air Terminal, and later Lockheed in Burbank and the Grand Central Airport in Glendale. In 1940 the airlines were all at Burbank except for Mexicana's three departures a week from Glendale. In late 1946 most airline flights moved to LAX, but Burbank always retained a few. Mines Field did not extend west of Sepulveda Boulevard. Sepulveda was rerouted circa 1950 to loop around the west ends of the extended east-west run Runways, now runways 25L and 25R, which by November 1950 were 6,000 feet 1, meters long. A tunnel was completed in 1953 allowing Sepulveda Boulevard to revert to straight and pass beneath the two runways, it was the first tunnel of its kind. For the next few years the two runways were 8,500 feet 2, meters long. The X in LAX Before the 1930s, existing airports used a two-letter abbreviation based on the weather stations at the airports. At that time, LA served as the designation for Los Angeles Airport. But with the rapid growth in the aviation industry the designations expanded to three letters C. 1947, and LA became LAX. The letter X has no specific meaning in this identifier, just like the X in DXB, Dubai. LAX is also used for the Port of Los Angeles in San Pedro and by Amtrak for Union Station in downtown Los Angeles.
Topic aircraft spotting the Imperial Hill area also known as Clutters Park in El Segundo is a prime location for aircraft spotting, especially for takeoffs. Another popular spotting location sits under the final approach for runways 24L and R on a lawn next to the Westchester in and out Burger on Sepulveda Boulevard. This is one of the few remaining locations in Southern California from which spotters may watch such a wide variety of low-flying commercial airliners from directly underneath a flight path. Topic. Space Shuttle Endeavour At 12.51 p.m. on Friday, September 21, 2012, a shuttle carrier aircraft carrying the Space Shuttle Endeavour landed at LAX on runway 25L. An estimated 10,000 people saw the shuttle land. Interstate 105 was backed up for miles at a standstill. Imperial Highway was shut down for spectators. It was quickly taken off the shuttle carrier aircraft, a modified Boeing 747, and was moved to a United Airlines hangar. The shuttle spent about a month in the hangar while it was prepared to be transported to the California Science Center. Topic theme building The distinctive white Googie theme building, designed by Pereira and Luckman architect Paul Williams and constructed in 1961 by Robert E. McKee Construction Co., resembles a flying saucer that has landed on its four legs. A restaurant with a sweeping view of the airport is suspended beneath two arches that form the legs. The Los Angeles City Council designated the building a Los Angeles Historic Cultural Monument in 1992. A $4 million renovation, with retro-futuristic interior and electric lighting designed by Walt Disney Imagineering, was completed before the Encounter restaurant opened there in 1997. Visitors are able to take the elevator up to the roof of the theme building, which closed after the September 11, 2001 attacks for security reasons and reopened to the public on weekends beginning on July 10, 2010. Additionally, a memorial to the victims of the 9-11 attacks is located on the grounds, as three of the four hijacked planes were originally destined for LAX. <laughs> Runways. 24R, 06L and 24L, 06R designated the North Airfield Complex are north of the airport terminals, and 25R, 07L and 25L, 07R designated the South Airfield Complex are south of the airport terminals. Since 1972, Los Angeles World Airports has adopted the preferential runway use policy to minimize noise. During daylight hours 0630-0000, the normal air traffic pattern is the Westerly Operations plan, named for the prevailing west winds. Under Westerly Operations, departing aircraft take off to the west, and arriving aircraft approach from the east. To reduce noise from arriving aircraft during night hours 0000-0630, the air traffic pattern becomes Over Ocean Operations. Under Over Ocean. Departing aircraft continue to take off to the west, but arriving aircraft approach from the west unless otherwise required to approach from the east due to reduced visibility or easterly winds. As the name implies, easterly operations is used when prevailing winds have shifted to originate from the east, typically during inclement weather and Santa Ana conditions. Under easterly operations, departing aircraft take off to the east, and arriving aircraft approach from the west, the inboard. Runways 06R, 24L and 07L, 25R, closest to the central terminal area are preferred for departures, and the outboard runways are preferred for arrivals. During noise-sensitive hours 2200-0700 and over-ocean operations, the inboard runways are used preferentially, with arrivals shifting primarily to 06R, 24L and departures from 07L, 25R. Historically, over 90% of flights have used the inboard departures and outboard arrival scheme. During westbound operations during the daytime, airplanes parked on the north complex tend to use runway 6R, 24L for almost all departures, and airplanes parked on the south complex use runway 7L, 25R for all departures requiring the left turn, and runway 24L if they are making an immediate right turn. For arrivals, flights coming from the north tend to use runway 6L, 24R, and flights coming from the south tend to use runway 7R, 25L. 
For flights having a long final westbound, it could depend. The South Airfield complex tends to see more operations than the North, due to a larger number of passenger gates and air cargo operations. Runways in the North Airfield complex are separated by 700 feet 210 meters. Plans have been advanced and approved to increase the separation by 260 feet 79 meters, which would allow a central taxiway between runways, despite opposition from residents living north of LAX. The separation between the two runways in the South Airfield complex has already increased by 55 feet 17 meters to accommodate a central taxiway. Terminals Overview LAX has nine passenger terminals with a total of 128 gates arranged in the shape of the letter U or a horseshoe. The terminals are served by a shuttle bus. The Tom Bradley International Terminal and Terminals 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 are all connected airside via an overground passage between Terminal 4 and the Tom Bradley International Terminal, an underground tunnel between Terminals 4, 5, and 6 and aboveground walkways between Terminals 6, 7, and 8. Additional airside shuttle buses operate among Terminals 4, 6, and the American Eagle Remote Terminal, as well as between Terminals 2, 3, and the Tom Bradley International Terminal. There are no physical airside connections between any of the other terminals. In addition to these terminals, there are 2 million square feet square meters of cargo facilities at LAX, and a heliport operated by Bravo Aviation. Airlines are located in the following terminals. Terminal 1, Gates 9, 10, 11A11B, 12A12B, 13-15, 16A, and 17A17B, Southwest. Southwest uses Terminal 1 for international check-in of passengers. Terminal 2, Gates 21-21B, 22-22A, 23-23A, 24-24A, and 25-28, Delta and Delta Connection along with Aer Lingus, Aeromexico, Virgin Atlantic, and WestJet. Virgin Australia and Volaris also use Terminal 2 for check-in of passengers. Terminal 3, Gates 30, 31A31B, 32, 33A33B, 34-36, 37A37B, and 38, Delta and Delta Connection. Copa Airlines, Avianca, and Interjet use Terminal 3 for check-in of passengers. Terminal 4, Gates 40-41, 42A42B, 43, 45, 46A46C, 47A47B, 48A48B, and 49A49B, American Terminal 5, Gates 50A50B, 51A51B, Gates 52A52J are located at the American Eagle Terminal, 53A53B, 54A54B, 55A, 56-57, 58, and 59, American, American Eagle, Allegiant Air, Frontier Airlines, Hawaiian Airlines, JetBlue, Spirit Airlines, and Sun Country Airlines, Terminal 6, Gates 60-63, 64A-64B, 65A-65B, 66, 67, 68A-68B, and 69A-69B, Alaska Airlines, Air Canada, Boutique Air, Mokulele Airlines, Thomas Cook Airlines, Viva Aerobus, and XL Airways France. Ethiopian Airlines uses Terminal 6 for check-in of passengers. Terminal 7, 70A70B, 71A71B, 72A72B, 73, 74A74B, 75A75B, 76A76B, and 77A77B, United and United Express. Terminal 8, Gates 81, 83 288, United and United Express. Tom Bradley International Terminal TBIT, Gates 101-159, Aeroflot, Air China, Air France, Air New Zealand, Air Tahiti Nui, Alitalia, All Nippon Airways, Asiana Airlines, Austrian Airlines, British Airways, Cathay Pacific, China Airlines, China Eastern Airlines, China Southern Airlines, EVA Air, El Al, Emirates, Etihad Airways, Fiji Airways, Hainan Airlines, Hong Kong Airlines, Iberia, Japan Airlines, KLM, Korean Air, 
Air, LATAM Chile, LATAM Peru, LA Polish Airlines, Lufthansa, Norwegian Air Shuttle, Philippine Airlines, Qantas, Qatar Airways, Saudia, Scandinavian Airlines, Sichuan Airlines, Singapore Airlines, Swiss International Airlines, Turkish Airlines, Shamanair, WOW Air uses TBIT for check-in of passengers. Avianca, Copa Airlines, Ethiopian Airlines, Interjet, Virgin Australia, and Valaris use TBIT for arrivals. Airlines and destinations Passenger Topic Cargo Topic Destination Map Topic Traffic and Statistics LAX handles more origin and destination not connecting passengers than any other airport in the world the airport handled 28,861,477 enplanements the total number of passengers boarding an aircraft in 2008 this makes LAX the third busiest airport in the United States in terms of enplanements it is the world's fifth busiest airport by passenger traffic and 15th busiest by cargo traffic serving over 70.6 million passengers and 2 million tons of freight and mail in 2014 it is the busiest airport in the state of California, and the second busiest airport by passenger boardings in the United States, based on final 2013 statistics. In terms of international passengers, as of 2012, LAX is the third busiest in the United States behind JFK in New York City and MIA in Miami, and, as of 2006, 26th worldwide. The number of aircraft operations landings and takeoffs has steadily increased to 636,706 in 2014. 14, up from 614,917 in 2013, according to the Federal Aviation Administration. The Airports Council International places LAX at third most aircraft movements in the world, as of 2013. <laughs> Top domestic destinations Top international destinations Topic Airline market share Topic Ground transportation Topic Transportation between terminals Shuttles operate to and from the terminals, providing frequent service for connecting passengers. However, connecting passengers who use these shuttles must leave and then later re-enter security. <laughs> Airside connectors Underground tunnels connect between terminals 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, and an aboveground connector between TBIT and Terminal 4 opened in February 2016. <laughs> <laughs> Freeways and roads LAX's terminals are immediately west of the interchange between Century Boulevard and Sepulveda Boulevard State Route 1. The 405 freeway can be reached to the east via Century Boulevard, and the 105 freeway can be reached to the south via Sepulveda Boulevard. Sepulveda Boulevard also goes right under the airport runways. <laughs> bus The closest bus stops to the terminals are the pair of opposites on Sepulveda Boulevard and Century Boulevard, served by Metro 117, Torrance 8 Metro 232, Commuter Express 574 and Metro 40 to Los Angeles Union Station Owl service only. 
In addition, out of a number of bus systems, many routes local, rapid and express of the LACMTA Metro 232 to Long Beach, Line 8 of Torrance Transit, Line 109 of Beach Cities Transit, the Santa Monica Big Blue Bus Systems Line 3 and Rapid 3 via Lincoln Boulevard to Santa Monica and the Culver City Buses Line 6 and Rapid 6 via Sepulveda Boulevard to Culver City and UCLA, LADOT Commuter Express 438 to Downtown LA Monday to Friday rush hours a.m., all make stops at the LAX Transit Center in parking lot C on 96th Street, where Shuttle Bus C offers free connections to and from every LAX terminal, and at the Green Line, where Shuttle Bus G connects to and from the terminals. The Taiwanese airline China Airlines operates a bus service from LAX to Monterey Park and Roland Heights. This service is only available for China Airlines customers. Topic. Flyaway bus The Flyaway bus is a non-stop motorcoach, shuttle service run by the LAWA, which provides scheduled service between LAX and downtown Los Angeles Union Station, the San Fernando Valley Van Nuys, West Los Angeles Westwood, Hollywood, Long Beach, California, and Santa Monica was discontinued in 2015. The Irvine Flyaway was discontinued on August 31, 2012. The shuttle service stops at every LAX terminal. The service hours vary based on the line. All lines use the regional system of high-occupancy vehicle lanes to expedite their trips. The Los Angeles Union Station service and a late-night branch of Metro Local Route 40 are the only direct transport links between the airport and downtown Los Angeles. <laughs> Metro Rail. Shuttle Bus G offers a free connection to and from the Aviation LAX station on the Los Angeles Metro Rail Green Line. The line was originally intended to be a people mover to connect directly to the airport terminals, but budgetary restraints and opposition from local taxi and parking lot owners impeded its progress and won. Topic: <laughs> LAX train An automated people mover APM system is an under construction train by LAWA. The LAX APM will have six stations and be 2.25 miles in traveling distance, three stations serving the central area, terminals 1 to 8 and the Tom Bradley International Terminal. Heading east, one station serving a ground transportation hub called the Intermodal Transportation Facility West along with the surrounding hotels. The next station will be a four-level above-ground infill light rail station on the LAX, Crenshaw Metro line. At this station, the first level will be a second car, bus, bike transport facility called the Intermodal Transport Facility East. Second level will be ticketing. The third level will be LA Metro Rail's 96th Street Station and the fourth level will be the APM. The last stop will be a rental car hub station called the Consolidated Rent A Car Center, Conrack. The APM was designed to decrease the need for shuttle bus services and reduce traffic within World Way. The three-phase project is estimated to cost $5.5 billion, and have a completion date of 2023. The APM will have nine total trains, each operating in four car sets with capacity of containing up to 200 passengers. The APM will operate every two minutes, with a 10 minute end to end travel time. As plans were being finalized, in June 2014, the Los Angeles County Metropolitan Transportation Authority approved a $200 million Metro Rail infill station called Aviation, 96th Street on the under construction Crenshaw, LAX line to connect the APM, connecting the terminals to county wide rail system. Los Angeles had bid for the 2024 Olympic Games in 2016 and was one of two city finalists. Due to decreasing demand to host the Olympics, the IOC awarded both Los Angeles and the City of Paris with Olympic Games each, Los Angeles being awarded the latter, the 2028 Summer Olympics Games. The project will be completed in time for the 2028 Summer Olympics in 2023 as its original projected completion date was by 2024 before the awarding. They choose to retain the original deadline. LAWA has split the project in three phases. The project has been approved and the construction and operating bidding process was commenced. Three firms submitted bids and LAWA announced scoring for the project would be based on 
Technical merit, visual appeal, user experience and price. Lawa proposed a public-private partnership wherein a private sector partner would responsible for the construction and operation of the People Mover. Los Angeles City Council gave final approval on April 11, 2018 to LAX Integrated Express Solutions. The joint bid that included manufacturer Bombardier Transportation at $4.895 billion over 30 years to build and operate. Phase 1 construction Dallas-based building firm Austin Commercial was awarded a five-year contract to commence construction in the first quarter of 2018 on Phase 1 of the APM project. The project consists of bridges to connect passengers between the three unbuilt APM stations inside World Way and its terminals. The bridges will also house restrooms, airport lounges offices and other spaces. The project is expected to finish by 2021, followed by phases 2 and 3 that will consist of the actual people mover and off-site buildings. In January 2018, a consortium led by Hochtief and Bombardier Transportation was selected as the preferred developer to be awarded the $1.95 billion design, build, operate contract. As of early 2018, LAX was in the process of removing 2,100 parking spaces in Lot C to reconfigure the area for Phase II construction purposes. Utility relocation will start in the second quarter of 2018. The guideway will see construction in early 2019, taking up to three years to complete. Topic: <laughs> Taxis and private shuttles. Taxicab services are operated by nine city-authorized taxi companies and regulated by Authorized Taxicab Supervision Inc. (ATS). ATS maintains a taxicab holding lot under the 96th Street Bridge where, at peak periods, hundreds of cabs queue up to wait their turn to pull into the central terminal area to pick up passengers. A number of private shuttle companies also offer limousine and bus services to LAX Airport. Uber and Lyft both provide ride services to and from LAX. All drop-offs and pickups happen on the upper departures level. Pickups arriving passengers only happen at one of the designated rideshare signs. There are six rideshare sign locations around the airport, labeled A through F. Lyft and Uber drivers are not allowed on the lower arrivals area, except when picking up a disabled passenger who requires ADA access. <laughs> Coast Guard Air Station Los Angeles The airport also functioned as a joint civil-military facility, providing a base for the United States Coast Guard and its Coast Guard Air Station Los Angeles facility, operating four HH-65 Dolphin helicopters, which covers Coast Guard operations in various Southern California locations, including Catalina Island. Missions include search and rescue SAR, law enforcement, aids to navigation support such as operating lighthouses and various military operations. In addition, Coast Guard helicopters assigned to the air station deploy to Coast Guard cutters. The air station relocated by May 18, 2016 from LAX to accommodate the planned improvements for LAX's midfield, including the Midfield Satellite Concourse North MSC North Terminal. The air station moved to U.S. Navy's Naval Air Station Point Magoo, part of the Naval Base Ventura County NBVC in Point Magoo, California. Topic Flight Path Learning Center and Museum The Flight Path Learning Center is a museum located at 6661 Imperial Highway and was formerly known as the West Imperial Terminal. This building used to house some charter flights e.g. Condor Airlines, Martin Air Holland, World Airways and regular scheduled flights by MGM Grand Air. It sat empty for 10 years until it was reopened as a learning center for LAX. The center contains information on the history of aviation, several pictures of the airport, as well as aircraft scale models, flight attendant uniforms, and general airline memorabilia such as playing cards, china, magazines, signs, even a TWA gate information sign. The museum also offers school tours and a guest speaker program. 
The museum's library contains an extensive collection of rare items such as aircraft manufacturer company newsletters, magazines, technical manuals for both military and civilian aircraft, industry magazines dating back to World War II and before, historic photographs, and other invaluable references on aircraft operation and manufacturing. The museum has on display the Spirit of 76, which is a DC 3, DC 3 262, serial number 3269. After being in commercial airline service, the plane served as a corporate aircraft for Union Oil Company for 32 years. The plane was built in the Douglas Aircraft Company plant in Santa Monica in January 1941, which was a major producer of both commercial and military aircraft. The museum claims to be the only aviation museum and research center situated at a major airport and the only facility with a primary emphasis on contributions of civil aviation to the history and development of Southern California. There are other museums at major airports, however, including the Udvar Hazy Center of the National Air and Space Museum adjacent to Washington Dulles Airport, the Royal Thai Air Force Museum at Don Muang Airport, the Suomen Ilmailamuseo Finnish Aviation Museum at Helsinki Vanta Airport, the Frontiers of Flight Museum at Dallas Love Field, the Tulsa Air and Space Museum and Planetarium at Tulsa International Airport and others. Other facilities The airport has the administrative offices of Los Angeles World Airports. Continental Airlines once had its corporate headquarters on the airport property. At a 1962 press conference in the office of Mayor of Los Angeles Sam Yorty, Continental Airlines announced that it planned to move its headquarters to Los Angeles in July 1963. In 1963 Continental Airlines headquarters moved to a two-story, $2.3 million building on the grounds of the airport. The July 2009 Continental Magazine issue stated that the move, "...underlined Continental Airlines' Western and Pacific orientation." On July 1, 1983 the airline's headquarters were relocated to the America Tower in the Neartown area of Houston. In addition to Continental Airlines, Western Airlines and Flying Tiger Line also had their headquarters at LAX. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Accidents and Incidents. During its history there have been numerous incidents, but only the most notable are summarized below. Topic: 1930s. On January 23, 1939, the sole prototype Douglas 7B twin-engine attack bomber, designed and built as a company project, suffered a loss of the vertical fin and rudder during a demonstration flight over Mines Field, flat spun into the parking lot of North American Aviation, and burned. Another source states that the test pilot, in an attempt to impress the Gallic passenger, attempted a snap roll at low altitude with one engine feathered, resulting in the fatal spin. Douglas test pilot Johnny Cable bailed out at 300 feet, his chute unfurled but did not have time to deploy, he was killed on impact, the flight engineer John Parks rode in the airframe and died, but 33-year-old French Air Force capped. Paul Kemedlin, riding in the aft fuselage near the top turret, survived with a broken leg, severe back injuries, and a slight concussion. The presence of Kemedlin, a representative of a foreign purchasing mission, caused a furor in Congress by isolationists over neutrality and export laws. The type was developed as the Douglas DB-7. Topic: 1940s. On June 1, 1940, the first Douglas R-3 D-1 for the U.S. Navy, Buno 1901, crashed at Mines Field, before delivery. The Navy later acquired the privately owned DC-5 prototype, from William E. Boeing as a replacement. On November 20, 1940, the prototype NA-73X Mustang, NX-19998, first flown October 26, 1940, by test pilot Vance Breeze, crashed this date. According to P-51 designer Edgar Schmood, the NA-73 was lost because test pilot Paul Balfour refused, before a high-speed test run, to go through the takeoff and flight test procedure with Schmood while the aircraft was on the ground, claiming, one airplane was like another. After making two high-speed passes over Mines Field, he forgot to put the fuel valve on, reserve, and during the third pass ran out of fuel. 
An emergency landing in a freshly plowed field caused the wheels to dig in, the aircraft flipped over, the airframe was not rebuilt, the second aircraft being used for subsequent testing. On October 26, 1944, WASP pilot Gertrude Tompkins Silver of the 601st Ferrying Squadron, 5th Ferrying Group, Love Field, Dallas, Texas, departed Los Angeles Airport, in a North American P-51D Mustang, 4415669, at 1,600 hours PWT, headed for the East Coast. She took off into the wind, into an offshore fog bank, and was expected that night at Palm Springs. She never arrived. Due to a paperwork foul up, a search did not get underway for several days, and while the eventual search of land and sea was massive, it failed to find a trace of silver or her plane. She is the only missing WASP pilot. She had married SGT. Henry Silver one month before her disappearance. Topic: 1960s. On January 13, 1969, Scandinavian Airlines System Flight 933 Douglas DC-862, crashed into Santa Monica Bay, approximately 6 nautical miles 11 kilometers west of LAX at 7.21 p.m., local time. The aircraft was operating as Flight SK-933, nearing the completion of a flight from Seattle. Of nine crewmembers, three lost their lives to drowning, while 12 of the 36 passengers also drowned. On January 18, 1969, United Airlines Flight 266 of Boeing 727-200 bearing the registration number N7434U, crashed into Santa Monica Bay approximately 11.3 miles .2 kilometers west of LAX at 6.21 p.m. local time. The aircraft was destroyed, resulting in the loss of all 32 passengers and six crew members aboard. Topic: 1970s. On the evening of June 6, 1971, Hughes Air West Flight 706, a Douglas DC-9 jetliner that had departed LAX on a flight to Salt Lake City, Utah, was struck nine minutes after takeoff by a U.S. Marine Corps McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom II fighter jet over the San Gabriel Mountains. The mid-air collision killed all 44 passengers and five crew members aboard the DC-9 airliner and one of two crewmen aboard the military jet. On August 6, 1974, a bomb exploded near the Pan Am ticketing area at Terminal 2, three people were killed and 35 were injured. On March 1, 1978, two tires burst in succession on a McDonnell Douglas DC-1010 on Continental Airlines Flight 603 during its takeoff roll at LAX and the plane, bound for Honolulu, veered off the runway. A third tire burst and the DC-10's left landing gear collapsed, causing a fuel tank to rupture. Following the aborted takeoff, spilled fuel ignited and enveloped the center portion of the aircraft in flames. During the ensuing emergency evacuation, a husband and wife died when they exited the passenger cabin onto the wing and dropped down directly into the flames. Two additional passengers died of their injuries approximately three months after the accident. Seventy-four others aboard the plane were injured, as were eleven firemen battling the fire. On the evening of March 10, 1979, Swift Air Flight 235, a twin-engine aerospatial Nord 262A33 turboprop en route to Santa Maria, was forced to ditch in Santa Monica Bay after experiencing engine problems upon takeoff from LAX. The pilot, co-pilot and a female passenger drowned when they were unable to exit the aircraft after the ditching. The female flight attendant and the three remaining passengers—two men and a pregnant woman— survived and were rescued by several pleasure boats and other watercraft in the vicinity. 1980s On August 31, 1986, Aeromexico Flight 498, a DC-9 en route from Mexico City, Mexico to Los Angeles, began its descent into LAX when a Piper Cherokee collided with the DC-9's left horizontal stabilizer over Cerritos, California, causing the DC-9 to crash into a residential neighborhood. All 67 people on the two aircraft were killed, in addition to 15 people on the ground. Five homes were destroyed and an additional seven were damaged by the crash and resulting fire. The Piper went down in a nearby schoolyard and caused no further injuries on the ground. 
As a result of this incident, the FAA required all commercial aircraft to be equipped with Traffic Collision Avoidance System TCAS. Topic 1990s. On February 1, 1991, U.S. Air Flight 1493, arriving from Columbus, Ohio, a Boeing 737-300, landing on runway 24L at LAX, collided on touchdown with a SkyWest Airlines Fairchild Metroliner, Flight 5569, departing to Palmdale, California. The SkyWest plane was given clearance to wait on the runway for takeoff. The same controller then gave the U.S. airplane clearance to land on the same runway, forgetting that the SkyWest plane was there. The collision killed all 12 occupants of the SkyWest plane and 23 people aboard the U.S. Air 737. On October 31, 1999, Egypt Air Flight 990, a Boeing 767-366ER which had initially began at LAX, crashed into the Atlantic Ocean 60 miles southwest of Nantucket Island 31 minutes after taking off from John F. Kennedy Airport in New York City, killing all 217 passengers and crew on board. It is believed that the first officer Gamil al batauti intentionally crashed the plane, although this cause is disputed by the Egyptian government. 2000s Al-Qaeda attempted to bomb LAX on New Year's Eve 1999-2000. The bomber, Algerian Ahmed Ressam, was captured in Port Angeles, Washington, the U.S. port of entry, with a cache of explosives that could have produced a blast 40 times greater than that of a car bomb hidden in the trunk of the rented car in which he had traveled from Canada. He had planned to leave one or two suitcases filled with explosives in an LAX passenger waiting area. He was initially sentenced to 22 years in prison, but in February 2010 an appellate court ordered that his sentence be extended. On January 31, 2000, Alaska Airlines Flight 261, a McDonnell Douglas MD-83 jetliner flying from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico to San Francisco and Seattle, requested an emergency landing at LAX after experiencing problems with its tail-mounted horizontal stabilizer. Before the plane could divert to Los Angeles, it suddenly plummeted into the Pacific Ocean approximately 2.7 miles kilometers north of Anacapa Island off the California coast, killing all 88 people aboard. Three of the four planes hijacked on September 11, 2001 were bound for LAX. In the 2002 Los Angeles International Airport shooting of July 4, 2002, Hesham Mohammed Hadayat killed two Israelis at the ticket counter of El Al Airlines at LAX. Although the gunman was not linked to any terrorist group, the man was upset at U.S. support for Israel, and therefore was motivated by political disagreement. This led the FBI to classify this shooting as a terrorist act, one of the few on U.S. soil since the September 11 attacks. On September 21, 2005, JetBlue Flight 292, an Airbus A320 discovered a problem with its landing gear as it took off from Bob Hope Airport in Burbank, California. It flew in circles for three hours to burn off fuel, then landed safely at Los Angeles International Airport on runway 25L, balancing on its back wheels as it rolled down the center of the runway. Passengers were able to watch their own coverage live from the satellite broadcast on JetBlue in-flight TV seat displays of their plane as it made an emergency landing with the front landing gear visibly becoming damaged. Because JetBlue did not serve LAX at the time, the aircraft was evaluated and repaired at a Continental Airlines hangar. On July 29, 2006, after America West Express Flight 6008, a Canadair regional jet operated by Mesa Airlines from Phoenix, Arizona, landed on runway 25L. Controllers instructed the pilot to leave the runway on a taxiway known as Mike and stop short of runway 25R. Even though the pilot read back the instructions correctly, he accidentally taxied onto 25R and into the path of a departing SkyWest Airlines Embraer EMB-120 operating United Express Flight 6037 to Monterey, California. They cleared each other by 50 feet 15 meters and nobody was hurt. On August 16, 2007, a runway incursion occurred between WestJet Flight 900 and Northwest Airlines Flight 180 on runways 24R and 24L, respectively, with the aircraft coming within 37 feet 11 meters of each other. 
The planes were carrying a combined total of 296 people, none of whom were injured. The NTSB concluded that the incursion was the result of controller error. In September 2007, FAA Administrator Marion Blakey stressed the need for LAX to increase lateral separation between its pair of north runways in order to preserve the safety and efficiency of the airport. Topic 2010s. On October 13 and 14, 2013, two incidents of dry ice bomb explosions occurred at the airport. The first dry ice bomb exploded at 7 p.m. in an employee restroom in Terminal 2, with no injuries. Terminal 2 was briefly shut down as a result. On the next day at 8.30 p.m., a dry ice bomb exploded on the ramp area near the Tom Bradley International Terminal, also without injuries. Two other plastic bottles containing dry ice were found at the scene during the second explosion. On October 15, a 28-year-old airport employee was arrested in connection with the explosions and was booked on charges of possession of an explosive or destructive device near an aircraft. He is currently held on a $1 million bail. On October 18, a 41-year-old airport employee was arrested in connection with the second explosion, and was booked on suspicion of possessing a destructive device near an aircraft. Authorities believe that the incidents are not linked to terrorism. In the 2013 Los Angeles International Airport shooting of November 1, 2013, at around 9.31 a.m. PDT, a lone gunman entered Terminal 3 and opened fire with a semi-automatic rifle, killing a Transportation Security Administration TSA officer and wounding three other people. The gunman was later apprehended and taken into custody. Until the situation was clarified and under control, a few terminals at the airport were evacuated, all inbound flights were diverted and all outbound flights were grounded until the airport began returning to normal operation at around 2.30 p.m. On August 28, 2016, there was a false report of shots fired throughout the airport, causing a temporary lockdown and about three hours of flight delays. On May 20, 2017, Aeromexico Flight 642, a Boeing 737-800, collided with a utility truck on a taxiway near runway 25R, injuring eight people, two of them seriously. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Planned modernization project. Lawa currently has several plans to modernize LAX. These include terminal and runway improvements, which will enhance the passenger experience, reduce overcrowding, and provide airport access to the latest class of very large passenger aircraft. These improvements include New Crossfield Taxiway New large aircraft gates at Tom Bradley International Terminal TBIT, TBIT core improvements New midfield satellite concourse Replacement of central utility plant Terminal and runway improvements. Lawa is also planning to construct and operate a 24 hour automated people mover. This small train will include three stations in the central terminal area and three outside east of the terminals at a new intermodal transportation facility hub, connecting passengers between the central terminal area and the Metro Green Line, the future Metro Crenshaw, LAX Line regional and local bus lines, and a consolidated car rental facility. In popular culture Numerous films and television shows have been set or filmed partially at LAX, at least partly due to the airport's proximity to Hollywood Studios and Los Angeles. Film shoots at the Los Angeles airports, including LAX, produced $590 million for the Los Angeles region from 2002 to 2005. See also California World War II Army Airfields List of airports in the Los Angeles area Metro Los Angeles Airport Police Pearson Mitchell Hall